Good afternoon, everyone. Today's session on crown edge is about oral and maxillofacial pathology and microbiology, one of the topics under that. I'm Dr. Shamila Karnam, Associate Professor, the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology, Rajarajeshwari Dental College and Hospital, Bangalore. How important is oral and maxillofacial pathology and microbiology for NEET? It is definitely a very important subject for NEET exams. Uh, it makes up for 9 to 10% of the total questions. That's around 15 to 20 questions. In some of the papers, around 22 questions have come out of 240 questions. So it is uh, very important to score a substantial amount of marks, provided you learn the subject well. It is easy to answer questions if you have learned well, which requires several revisions. It is very important to make mental images of the diseases with clinical, radiographic, and histopathological features. I will, through the course, I will help you to remember the key features in your mind, have that mental image, just a photographic image of such lesions of oral pathology. I will help you do that. The reference books are Schaefer's textbook of oral pathology, oral and maxillofacial pathology by Neville Dam Allen, and many more books as and when required I will be guiding you through that. Let's start with today's topic, that is developmental disturbances affecting tongue. I'm going topic wise, and at the end of every topic, I mean, that is the next session, we will be having question answer session based on this topic learning. So that's how we move on to the next topic, and then we'll have question answer session on that. So that's how we cover topic wise, that way it will be a thorough preparation for you all. At the end of two, three topics, we will have a random question answer session for all the topics. Let's start with developmental anomalies affecting tongue. The first one is aglosia, second is microglosia, macroglosia, then is ankyloglosia or also called as tongue tie, cleft tongue, fissured tongue, then is median rhomboid glossitis, benign migratory glossitis, hairy tongue, and lingual varices. What is aglosia? It is a very rare condition where the tongue is completely absent. Most of the times it will be a rudimentary tongue that is basically known as microglosia. Because there is no tongue, it leads to dentoskeletal malocclusion, which is associated with other malformations related to hands, feet, cleft palate, dental agenesis. Next is macroglosia, which means enlarged tongue. Macro, enlarged, glosia is tongue, which can be of two types, true and pseudo or relative. True is absolute macroglosia. That is, tongue is definitely large, whereas pseudo or relative macroglosia means the tongue is relatively larger. That is, the tongue, tongue is of normal size, but the adjacent tissues, the jaws are all of smaller size. Relating to that, the tongue appears bigger. This is called as pseudo macroglosia. There are possible causes for the macroglosia are divided into congenital and acquired. Congenital are vascular malformations, lymphangioma and hemangioma. Those are very important. Please remember lymphangioma. It's a very mm -hmm. common site is the tongue for lymphangioma. Then is hemihyperplasia, then beckwith weidman syndrome, Down syndrome, neurofibromatosis. These are the congenital causes for macroglosia. For acquired, it is in edentulous patients because there are no teeth, the tongue gets relaxed and it spreads inside the oral cavity and becomes hypertrophic. Next is amyloidosis, which is a accumulation of protein called amyloid in the tongue. Myxedema in case of hypothyroidism, acromegaly, carcinoma and other tumors developing inside the tongue. All these are the acquired reasons for macroglosia. Some of the clinical features, this you will be able to guess yourselves because if a large tongue is there inside the mouth in the oral cavity, it will definitely cause obstruction to the breathing airway space, so leading to noisy breathing, drooling of saliva, dif eating difficulties, lisping speech. Because of the pressing of the teeth on the tongue, we'll have crenated lateral borders on the tongue. It will lead to open bite and mag mandibular prognathism. In severe cases, you may have dyspnea due to airway obstruction. They're based on what is the etiology for 
macroglossia, you will have different presentations of the macroglossia. If it is associated with beckwith Weidman syndrome in hyperthyroidism, and a smooth, diffuse, generalized enlargement of the tongue, you will be seeing. If it is in amyloidosis, it is nodular. If it is lymphangioma-related macroglossia, it is pebbly. If it is in Down syndrome, it is papillary and fissured. In edentulous patients, it is elevated and laterally spread and laxed. Treatment depends on the cause for macroglossia. And these are the images that you should um, you know, keep in your minds. And here, what you can see is the crenated tongue due to the pressing of the teeth on the tongue. Next is ankyloglossia or tongue tie, which means, which is due to short lingual frenum, which limits the tongue movement. The clinical features are the movement can be complete or partial based on the tongue tie type. It can, if it is complete tongue tie, then the movement is completely restricted. If it is partial, it is limited. Anterior open bite and periodontal problems leading to pockets, etc. very common with ankyloglossia cases. Speech defects and feeding problems too. Treatment is phrenectomy of the highly attaching short lingual phrenum. Here are the images. Now, I want you to keep this image in the mind when we talk about tongue tie. Coming to cleft tongue. Here, tongue develops from the fusion of two lingual swellings from the mandibular arch, as you remember the development of tongue. So whenever there is lack of merging of these lateral lingual swellings, when there is a failure of the fusion of these two lingual swellings, we end up having cleft or bifid tongue, which can be complete or partial. Clinical features, because of the clefting, there may be lodgement of the foot and microorganisms leading to infections. This is a feature also in oral facial digital syndrome. Here is the images for the cleft tongue or the bifid tongue. Orofacial digital syndrome is an important syndrome that you will be coming across even in clinical situations and definitely it's a very important neat examination question too. Here you can see that there are uh, the face, you can see that there is hypertilorism, uh, clubbing of the fingers, short uh, stubbed fingers are the features of oral facial digital syndrome. Next is fissure tongue, which is also called as scrotal tongue or lingua plicata. You have to remember the synonyms too. Etiology for fissure tongue, it can be hereditary or due to aging changes in the tongue or it can be due to some factors in the local environment. Clinical features, there are numerous grooves on the dorsal and the lateral aspects of the tongue. It will be also associated with geographic tongue occasionally. A syndrome very commonly associated with fissure tongue is melkerson rosenthal syndrome, about which we will be learning in the next session. Here is the image for fissure tongue. You can see in the image A that there is a lot of fissuring on the tongue. In image B, you can see the fissure tongue is also associated with geographic tongue on the lateral border of the tongue, where you see map-like areas with atrophic central, arithmetic central areas and uh, white peripheral areas. Histopathologically, what do we see in uh, fissure tongue is that loss of filiform papilla in the region and hyperplas hyperplasia of the retiridges. Very important characteristic feature that you see in histopathology are the neutrophil micro abscesses in the epithelium. I will show you the image and these are called as the Munro's micro abscesses. It's a very important question. There is no specific treatment needed. needed. Maintain the hygiene and brush the tongue regularly. Next is median rhomboid glossitis. Synonym for it is central papillary atrophy of tongue also known as posterior midline atrophic candidiasis. Old concept was thought to be congenital where failure of tuberculum impar to retract from between the lateral halves of the tongue will lead to this atrophic area on the median area of the tongue. Whereas the new concept is it is due to a fungal infection that is candida albicans infection, which is very common in diabetics. And this concept has you know, been approved because after antifungal therapy, the lesion has subsided substantially. Clinical features, it is ovoid, diamond-shaped, rhomboid patch, anterior to circumvallate papilla in the midline. It shows loss of filiform papilla. 
it shows kissing lesion on the palate i'll show you the image of the kissing lesion it is called kissing lesion because the the rhomboid region of the tongue which is touching the palate literally kissing the palate leading to the trans, uh, transferring of the microorganisms to the that region of the palate and causing a lesion there and this is called as kissing lesion here i would like to uh, bring your attention to another lesion called as kissing disease which is infectious mononucleosis caused by epstein barr virus we will come to all this discussion in my next session histologic features it is it shows loss of papilla that is why it is bald in that area it shows atrophic stratified squamous epithelium or hyperkeratosis with elongated retiniculus chronic inflammatory cell infiltration in the connective tissue with dilated blood vessels and lymphatics we can actually may not need not remember this particular point but please remember there is loss of papillae and fungal hyphae in that region treatment it regresses over time but with antifungal therapy it is faster in sub subsiding here is the median rhomboid glossitis on the tongue and here is the kissing lesion on the palate as you can see it is taken up almost the same uh, you know image of the tongue lesion on the palate next is benign migratory glossitis which is also called as geographic tongue because of the lesion which resembles map like areas on the tongue then it is also called as erythema migrans because the lesion kind of migrate from one place on the tongue to another area on the tongue it's because of which it's also called as wandering rash of the tongue etiology is unknown many a times it is emotional hormonal hormonal imbalances it can be due to infection or atopy lesions remain for a very short time in one location it heals just to appear in another location that's thus it is called as migratory or erythema migrans the lesions are reddish in color it is uh, we have to remember that this can be remembered as a oral counterpart of or psoriasis psoriasis is a skin lesion uh, oral counterpart could be erythema migrans here is the geographic tongue you can see that these are the map like areas hence the name geographic tongue so i want you to capture this image in your minds here the lesion generally starts at the tip and heals just to appear in another area hence it is called as erythema migrans in the lesional area you will see loss of filiform papilla again in the epithelium you will be seeing micro abscesses where there is accumulation of lymphocytes and this is called as munros micro abscesses which are subcorneal pustular mucositis these are psoriasiform lesions and in the connective tissue we will see lot of inflammatory cells here is the histopathology image photomicrograph of so uh, erythema migrans you can see that um, this is loss of filiform papilla there are no projecting papilla in in this area and you can see that inside the epithelium there is there are lot of lymphocytes accumulating leading to micro abscess abscesses are nothing but white blood cell accumulation and the dead cell accumulation and that's exactly what we see in these micro abscesses inside the epithelium and these are called as munros micro abscesses and you can see that the retiniculus are quite long elongated and which is similar to what we see in psoriasis treatment it regresses if left untreated also but with um, nominal topical corticosteroids it heals better zinc supplementation is good uh, to heal the lesions quicker next is hairy tongue also called as lingua villosa nigra here marked accumulation of keratin on filiform papillae are seen giving a hair like appearance and hair like feel on the tongue it is due to increased keratin production versus decreased disquamation the clearing of keratin is not happening effectively leading to lot of accumulation of keratin and giving the hairy tongue feel on the tongue etiology is unknown but can get exacerbated due to smoking antibiotic therapy poor oral hygiene general debilitation radiation therapy fungal overgrowth and another important thing that you have to look for is hiv infection if there is a hairy tongue patient coming to you get 
a screening test for HIV done. Here is the image for hairy tongue where you can see. Just imagine a hair on the tongue. How would you feel? You start feeling gagging, right? So with so much of keratin on the tongue, the patient is constantly gagging. What do we see? Elongated papilla with brown or yellow or black in color because of the food that we take or the, you know, the drinks that we consume will stain the keratin and give such a discoloration. Mid sometimes it may be seen just in the midline sparing the lateral borders, but sometimes it covers the entire dorsal tongue matted. Uh, many a times it is asymptomatic, but if it is severe, it definitely causes gagging sensation and leaves a bad taste in the mouth. Differential diagnosis has to be considered is the hairy leukoplakia, which is usually seen on the lateral border of the tongue and it is usually associated with Epstein-Barr virus. Histopathologic feature, you will be seeing filiform papilla, marked elongation of it, hyperplasia and lot of keratosis on it. Treatment, oral hygiene maintenance is very important and eliminate the predisposing factors. Give keratolytic agents if the Keratin accumulation is too high, you can apply a keratolytic agent such as podophyllin. Coming to lingual varices, which are basically abnormally dilated and tortuous vessels. In the, they are seen in the sublingual region, very commonly seen in that area. It, it, leads, it has multiple bluish purple papillar blebs on the ventral or the lateral border of the tongue. They remain asymptomatic mostly, but they may occasionally rupture and cause bleeding. They are mostly thrombosed. If they get thrombosed, we call it as buckshot beneath the mucosal surface, buckshot lesions. Okay, here is the image for lingual varices. Here are the buckshot beneath the mucosal surfaces on the ventral surface of the tongue. Next, the last part is lingual thyroid or the lingual nodule. In 10% of the cases, we, see, we do see thyroid, uh, remnant of the thyroid gland in the tongue. It is appearing as a nodular mass, deep seated to up to 2 to 3 cm. If it is a elevated one, it can cause dysphagia, dysphonia and dyspnea. Histologic feature, we do see thyroid tissue with colloid material, thyroid follicles with colloid material under the surface mucosa of the tongue. Treatment, it can be uh, removed surgically, but we have to confirm that there is presence of normal thyroid gland. Sometimes this will be the only thyroid gland that patient has. So we have to confirm before removing because this may lead to a lot of thyroid related issues if you remove the lingual thyroid. Here is the image for lingual thyroid and here are the histopathology showing colloid material of the thyroid follicles. If you have any questions, you can uh, give to me in the chat section of the YouTube. I will be more than happy to answer all the questions. Thank you.